Hello everybody and welcome. The Master Chief is a hero that we've all come to know and love. However, he didn't wake up one day as the savior of humanity. He was manufactured into a Spartan, but the external influences didn't stop there. Throughout his life, many people have influenced him, both positively and negatively, and these influences have crafted him into the broken hero that we know today. In this video, we're going to go over every person that influenced the Master Chief. We're going to go over each of these influences from the moment they entered his life. John was born on March 7, 2511. He lived with his mother and father in Elysium City on Eridanus II. He doesn't remember much of his pre-Spartan days. However, he remembers his mother. He remembers that she smelled of soap. He also vaguely remembers a few friends, two of which being Ellie and Katrina, who would run obstacle courses with John. Another of his friends would later become Lieutenant Parisa. John saved Parisa from drowning in a lake. Parisa's father took a photo of her and John. Parisa would keep the picture long after the boy she knew died at the age of six. She would join the UNSC and participate in the battle for Earth. While in New Mombasa, she would encounter a Spartan, a Spartan who would notice the photo and ask her about it. The Spartan was John. After realizing who she was, he decided he couldn't tell her who he was. It would ruin the morale of the troops he was commanding, and it would be a major security breach. Possibly the most influential person John ever encountered was Dr. Catherine Halsey. Halsey, as I'm sure you all know, was the head of the Spartan II program, the program that would see John and the rest of the Spartans turn from six-year-old children to the most expensive pieces of military hardware the UNSC ever produced. Halsey actually wasn't very hands-on with the Spartans. She left the military training to Chief Petty Officer Mendez, and the Spartans' academics were taught by the artificial intelligence Deja. Halsey did, however, see some disciplinary issues and the Spartan augmentations. She would inject them with a protein compound that increased muscle growth, density, and regeneration. She would graft their bones with ceramics to make them unbreakable. She would increase blood flow to their optic nerve to increase visibility in the dark, and she would literally hardwire their nervous system to increase reaction time by 300%. She would also invent the Mjolnir power suit. That gave the Spartans a fighting chance against the Covenant. The Master Chief, along with the rest of the Spartans, would view Halsey as their only motherly figure. They weren't Spartans, they were her Spartans. Chief Petty Officer Franklin Mendez was the Spartans' military trainer. He ran their boot camp and taught them the basics of becoming a soldier. Once they knew the basics, he ratcheted up the training. The Spartans all initially hated him, but they came to respect him. Specifically for John, though, he taught him how to be a teammate, not a lone wolf. After a training mission that saw the Spartan candidates stranded in the wilderness and tasked them with returning home, Mendez would promote John to team leader. One of Mendez's most important lessons was that a commander must be able to spend the lives of his subordinates, but never waste their lives. The adults running the Spartan II program weren't the only people that had an effect on John in his early years. His fellow Spartans did as well. John's first friends in the program were Sam and Kelly. In fact, Sam's first interaction with John was punching him. John would grow up and train with the Spartans. He would later remark that a lone Spartan was only 10% as effective as when paired with a team. The Spartans would even develop their own language that only they knew. Ali Ali Oxenfree and the Spartan Smile were all developed during this time. Unfortunately, in their first encounter with the Covenant, Sam would die. John and Sergeant Avery Johnson would meet early in the war, in 2526 to be exact. They would meet when Admiral Preston Cole would assign them both to Operation Silent Storm, an operation to steal a Covenant ship. John was initially wary of Johnson, but during Silent Storm, Johnson would act as John's military political advisor of sorts. Johnson knew how to navigate these things, and John was really out of his depth. Johnson would help the chief navigate the interdepartmental feud between the next two people I'm going to talk about, Hector Nieto and Marmon Crowther. Johnson would also witness John's promotion to Master Chief. Johnson and Chief would reunite on Alpha Halo, where Chief saved Johnson's squad. Unfortunately, John would watch the sergeant's squad be consumed by the flood. After destroying the Halo, John would find a pelican, and after docking and opening the hatch, he saw Johnson's hand. He pulled the sergeant through the hatch and put a pistol to his head. Chief told Johnson that he saw him die and to explain himself. After sufficiently convincing the chief that he was not, in fact, a flood-infected corpse, Chief eased himself. 
Johnson and Chief would rescue the rest of the Spartans from Reach and destroy the unyielding Hierophant before coming back to Earth. John would be given two data crystals by Dr. Halsey. One held the information on Johnson's immunity from the Flood, and one did not. Halsey gave Chief the option on which to deliver. If he delivered the crystal of Johnson's immunity, Johnson would be killed and dissected so Oni could possibly find a cure for the Flood. Chief destroyed that crystal. Johnson would also play a major part in the Battle for Earth, the Battle of Delta Halo, the Second Battle for Earth, and the Battle of the Ark. Unfortunately, he would lose his life on the replacement Halo that the Ark produced. His death still weighs heavily on John. Marlon Crowther and Hector Nyota were both assigned to Silent Storm. Crowther was a colonel of an ODST squad called the Black Daggers. He was initially hesitant to use the Spartans. However, Nyeto insisted. After a disastrous mission on Sayoba, Colonel Crowther learned of the Spartans' age, only being 15 at the time. Crowther refused to use the Spartans after that. However, again, Nyeto went to bat for the Spartans, almost being too nice. In the coming days, John, Crowther, and Johnson would discover that Nyeto was a insurrectionist sympathizer. He wasn't trying to help John by recommending him for these missions, he was trying to get John killed. The trio would then form a plan to take down Naedo. However, Chief would have to command ODSTs, so Crowther promoted John to the rank of Master Chief Petty Officer, with Johnson as a witness. Unfortunately, the trio would be unsuccessful at capturing Hector Naedo, as he had handpicked his entire bridge crew. Johnson would be jettisoned from the ship, Colonel Crowther would be killed, and Naedo escaped. A few months after Silent Storm, Blue Team would be deployed to the Carbulo Academy for Military Science to extract the planet's only survivors, a group of cadets. One of them was a young Thomas Lasky. While this meeting didn't leave much of a mark on Chief, the second meeting would. 31 years later, Lasky and Chief would meet again on Requiem. Lasky seemed to be the voice of reason on the bridge of the Infinity. When Cortana died, Lasky tried to comfort the hero, reminding him that he's not a machine and the Spartan was still human. In 2552, John would receive a Mjolnir upgrade, the Mark V. With this suit, he was able to harness the power of a shipborne AI, and Halsey provided that AI. Cortana and Chief would meet on August 29th, 2552. They would train together for one day, then the Covenant attacked Reach. From there on, we all know the story. Alpha Halo, Earth, Delta Halo, High Charity, their reunion on the Ark, Forward Unto Dawn, Requiem, and back to Earth where Cortana would die. While the pair only spent a total of 49 conscious days together, they were a bonded pair, perfectly matched, perfectly perfect. John loved Cortana, Cortana loved John. Not romantically, and maybe even not like siblings, but how service members love their fellow teammates. Cortana's loss was one that John didn't get over, the wound that never healed. After her death and John's reunion with Blue Team, John would push himself like never before, burying his thoughts and emotions in his work. When Cortana returned and revealed her plan, it was like a knife twisting in John's chest. He saw Cortana as his responsibility, and ultimately, his failure. That's why he would volunteer for the mission to stop her. John would meet Jacob Keyes much earlier in life, before he was even in the Spartan program. However, he wouldn't get to know him until 2552. Operation Red Flag saw the Pillar of Autumn, a Halcyon-class light cruiser, getting multiple upgrades. It also saw a new captain, Jacob Keyes. Operation Red Flag was initially a secret mission to steal a Covenant ship, abduct a prophet, and force a ceasefire. However, that would all be thrown out the window when the Covenant attacked Reach. Keyes and John would be instrumental in the defense of Reach and the implementation of the Cole Protocol. John thought himself to be the only Spartan when Keyes initiated a jump to slip space. Keyes would order John to take Cortana off the Pillar of Autumn and keep her safe from the Covenant. The two would meet again on the Truth and Reconciliation. John led a team onto the Covenant ship to rescue the captain. John notes that Keyes had a limp and contusions. He had obviously been tortured. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be the only time Keyes was tortured on the Halo. He was infected by the Flood and he was the chosen host to be turned into the proto-gravemind. John respected Keyes. He was a fantastic leader and an even better tactician. John knew of the miraculous Keyes loop. It deeply troubled him to see the captain in this condition. The chief had to kill him. 
Antonio Silva was the highest ranking officer on the Pillar of Autumn if you removed Captain Keyes. When Keyes was captured by the Covenant, Silva assumed command. He had a meeting with John, and it did not go well. You see, Silva was an ODST, and ODSTs had little love for the Spartans. Silva grilled John. Spartans are a failed project, a bunch of freaks. You're the last one, and that's a good thing. I'm glad your friends are dead. When asked if John understood, he simply said, no sir. On his return to Earth, John would meet Admiral Lord Terence Hood. Actually, they had met before, but not in any meaningful way. Chief and Johnson would receive medals for their actions on Alpha Halo, and Miranda Keys would accept an award on behalf of her father. Throughout Halo 2 and 3, Hood played an integral part in Chief's actions. Hood would ultimately authorize the Ford unto Dawn to travel to the Ark. Chief and Hood would meet again after his return to Earth, and Hood would offer the rank of Admiral to the Chief. But Chief declined. Chief and Miranda would work together in the defense for Earth, the Battle of Delta Halo, and the Battle of the Ark. Chief, like the rest of humanity, respected Miranda for her gutsy move to follow the Prophet of Regret's ship through slipspace. Miranda would be instrumental in convincing Hood to let them go through the portal to the Ark. Unfortunately, this is where she would lose her life. This would deeply affect John, as he wasn't fast enough to save her. On Delta Halo, Chief would meet Thel Vadam, also known as the Arbiter. While the two didn't work together much during the Battle of Delta Halo, it would be the second battle for Earth that the two would bond. The two would never be able to forgive and forget. There was 30 years of war, but they would call each other ally, even friend. Thel would help John through the Ark. He would kill the Prophet of Truth, and the pair would light the replacement Halo. Thel would be on the correct side of the Ford unto Dawn, and would make it back to Earth. He would also attend the Remembrance Ceremony at Voy. The Arbiter and the other two elites in Halo 3 were probably the only Sanghealy John would ever ally with, and John would only say a few words to Thel. Andrew Del Rio was the captain of the UNSC Infinity, and was the first captain Chief would encounter after being stranded for four years. The two wouldn't get along. For whatever reason, Del Rio decided that he wasn't going to like John, probably because of his contributions to the Spartan 4 program. John would be ordered to surrender his AI after Cortana's outburst. John refused and left the Infinity to deal with the Didact. Chief didn't make a habit of disobeying orders, but Del Rio left him no choice. The weapon was a direct copy of Cortana. At first he didn't trust her, even tried to delete her. Once the weapon realized that she was a copy of Cortana, and what Cortana did, she was ready to be deleted. But John realized that he couldn't beat the Banished without her, so he's still using her, and learning to trust her. Fernando Esparza is the pilot that saved Chief after the banished ambush of the UNSC Infinity. The two were at odds multiple times in their journey to stop the banished. The pilot let it be known that he was a coward when the banished attacked. He stole a pelican and fled, only to be stranded in space for six months. John comforted him by telling him that everyone fails, even Spartans. The pair would get closer as they fought through the banished. Chief would save the pilot from Eshram, and they'd stop the Harbinger. Thank you all for watching till the end. As always, I ask for your honest feedback in the comments section below. I'll be back next week for my recommended order for the Halo books. It would also make my day if you followed the Twitch. I love you. You have a great day.